What's up everyone, it is Dark Viper and I am here to show you a ton of Skyblocks tips and tricks to help you further in the game. A lot of you may already know a lot of these because we're just gonna be a little redundant on some of these. So again, if you already know some of these, awesome. Maybe you'll find a couple you didn't know about which is what we're here for. So first thing I wanna show you is how to use stairs instead of conveyors. Conveyors are very, very laggy for farms. You wanna use as few conveyors as possible, and here's why. When you're on a VIP server by yourself, things look fast, right? So you built your auto farm and things are looking buttery smooth. You're making a ton of onions or carrots or whatever you're farming, and then something awful happens. Your friends start piling on the server or you go onto a public server and your stuff is at a pure crawl. And that is because conveyor belts utilize server-side code, you gotta wait for the server to keep up with everyone else's stuff so it's just it's chugging along it's choking right and the reason why i like stairs instead of conveyors is stairs utilize local physics so you're not going to be waiting for the server to calculate your onions and how this works is these these stairs are actually just like these like wedges what happens if you see where this mouse is pointing so on the top right and it, you, if you were to cut that right there you would have a wedge. And that's because this is actually not a, a real stairway. So you can see right here, if you were to stack these, you're making just a giant wedge, which makes it so the onions can uh, fall down that slope very, very fast. Now, if it was an actual staircase, you're gonna see like when you move, you'd start like bumping really weird. Your character would animate oddly and you know, it just wouldn't feel right. So on top of that, the onions would actually stop on top of those, uh, the steps, right? Because it's a flat surface, but you do have to use conveyors no matter what, unfortunately, for totems to work in an auto form. So if you want the totem to actually drop the item, it has to be connected to a conveyor. So you do have to have at least one conveyor for each totem. Next thing I want to show you is how to utilize slabs for a ladder. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, I've been using this for a bit. It's actually a really, really fun way to make ladders. I actually use it on my auto farm designs and it just looks better than ladders, um, in my opinion. Um, and a lot of people are like surprised when you start like, you know, acting like you're Spider-Man crawling up the walls. Um, this is all, <laughs> honestly, this is all I really utilize slabs for <laughs> i don't really use them for anything else I'm, I'm sure i can make some really cool floors and stuff i just don't use them currently i'm sure i will in future builds next a lot of players especially new ones existing players already know this but a lot of new players don't realize that you can actually break up and pickaxe or dig up a bush and get the seed back same for uh flowers so if you see a flower don't harvest it because you can get the seed by digging it up so if you want to be able to move that flower somewhere else you can dig it up and transport it to or transplant it somewhere else if you'd like to um unfortunately i think the flower Flowers are not spawning anymore right now because they are optimizing. So we're trying to figure out when those are going to come back because I kind of need some flowers. So you're going to see in the market, flowers are going to skyrocket in prices. All right. So the next one, I want to tell you a little bit about fertilizing your crops and using water. So water and fertilizers just came out in the fishing update and it's actually really, really powerful. A lot of players don't actually realize how powerful this is because they haven't tried it or just too many steps or it's just too expensive, one or the other. But let me tell you something, the, the time savings for your crops is crazy. So so no, normal harvest time for an onion is four minutes and 30 seconds, right? So if I planted a seed on this normal soil here, it's gonna take four minutes and 30 seconds for that to pop up for me to be able to harvest. With water, it takes three minutes minutes and 15 seconds. So you're saving a minute and 15 seconds off of each harvest just with water alone. And what you do is you can actually set up sprinklers to auto water this. So it's amazing, right? So you're, you're saving a ton of time for your harvest. And then you come in to come in with fertilizer. Now fertilizer, you can, I'll, I'll show you how to make that in a little bit, but fertilizer you can use as well. And with onions with just fertilizer, it's 10 seconds faster than just water. So like I could go and fertilize just the onion seed and the time for an onion to be ready to harvest is three minutes and five seconds, somewhere around that. So you're saving about 10 seconds compared to water. And in order to make fertilizer, you just need to go to the composter. You need to use carp or salmon to be able to make fertilizer. It's really cheap. And then um, you can just basically, just like water, you place it on top of your seed and you're good. And then here's the crazy part. When you combine them, see this water? Water. We got water and fertilizer stacked right now on top of each other. When you combine water and fertilizer on an onion seed, it is two minutes. Instead of the three minutes, you're saving another minute on top of that. It is crazy fast. So you can actually be, have onions ready to be harvested every two minutes. So one tip, thanks to Gaming Raymond for this next tip from my Discord server, fertilizer does not actually get removed by totems. So if you're manually harvesting, you're gonna have to replace that fertilizer every single time. But if you are auto harvesting using totems, it doesn't pick up the fertilizer, it leaves it alone. So that's actually really cool. And I confirmed that on the official wiki. I, I did a little bit digging on that and I can confirm that 
totems do not remove the fertilizer. So your auto farms are gonna be golden with this. Now, one thing I don't know is if uh, fertilizer gets taken if you reload. I don't like reloading into the game. So I haven't tested that yet. So staying with the topic of farms, I wanna show you something really cool with the sprinklers that uh, Mama Mavi from my Discord and stream, actually, she's one of my stream mods. She actually gave me this tip. You can actually put the water catchers under your farms for the sprinklers. So if you wanna have um, water catchers be out of sight, so maybe you have a really cool looking farm, you don't really wanna see a bunch of you know blue tin or cans um, kinda hanging around your farm, you can actually put it under the farm, which is really, really cool. Um, it looks cool too, especially if you put the glass above it so you can kind of see it a little bit. It makes your farm look very futuristic, which I really, really liked. You can see I'm actually out of water on some of these, unfortunately. And so you're gonna probably need, depending on how many sprinklers you have, you're probably gonna need some more water catchers. Now, I haven't done any videos on sprinklers or water catchers, and I haven't even like like looked at how it could affect my farm builds because typically what I like to do is do the minimalistic approach first. You know, here's the washer, here's how you can do your farm without overcomplicating it because if you start adding in like 50 different dependencies and pieces to things, people can get a little confused. But I am going to do a dedicated video on how to upgrade your auto farm using sprinklers and potentially fertilizer. If you wanna use fertilizer, great. But I'm definitely gonna create a sprinkler system in this, uh, maybe an upcoming build video so you can see how I do it. The next tip here is a lot of people don't realize you can actually get items from digging them out. So if you have a tree and you dig out the grass block, you're gonna actually get the wood from the tree as well. Or if it's uh, under a sapling, you're gonna get the sapling. It just saves you a lot of time. Same with the bushes for berry bushes. Now you could just go and take the traditional approach and just swing the ax at the item, sure. Especially if that's your thing and you just feel like it's kind of, you know, zen-like for you and it relaxes you, then go for it. Do do whatever, you know, makes you happy. But this is just an extra tip if you're in a hurry and you want to break a lot of stuff very quickly, you could just break the, the ground up and you'll get the items above. Um, this includes like things like industrial chests. It'll work on um, vending machines and several other um, types of objects that require something to be under them. There's a lot of objects that don't actually require anything to be below them. So you might not get that item if it floats. For example, a conveyor doesn't require anything under it. So you'll have a floating conveyor. So it's not gonna work on everything, but things like, you know, bushes and trees and vending machines and that kind of thing, it actually works on. Same with uh, totems. So it works on totems as well. Another thing people don't realize, and it's kind of funny because I see people with gilded axes and gilded pickaxes, and unless it's for flex, it's actually very unnecessary because they do the same thing. They're, they're identical, just different models. So the pickaxe and the axe actually do the same amount of damage um, on any kind of object that I've seen. So you can break, break up blocks and ore and all that with the ax and same for a pickaxe against the tree. It doesn't really make a difference currently. I don't know if Deb's gonna ever make it so it's restricted so that they have more purpose. But right now, all you really need is a pickaxe inside your inventory. Now, next tip here, I'm gonna show you how to do load balancers. Load balancers are um, actually kind of a, more of a in advanced topic than you know I'm gonna be able to cover in this tips video. But I, the load balancers are possible and I get asked it a lot. So I'm just gonna do a quick little preview of what that looks like. So what you're gonna do is it's gonna be a multi-layer type uh, setup. Um, the way I like to do mine are um, kind of a waterfall. Now I've seen like at least three or four different waterfall designs and I will shout out Mayrush Arts, Jesse Games, um, and Panda Plays, who I see a lot of fans inside my comments always mentioning. I know Mayrush Art already, he's been a friend of mine, but I'm talking about Jesse, Jesse Games and Panda. I've been watching them a little bit more lately and they have a lot of cool like little techniques and stuff for their, their builds. You should definitely check them out if you're looking for um, new ideas for how to do your own like uh, island builds. But load balancers wise, they might have some builds for you that are that are some different options. I haven't really gone into a whole lot of these, but I will, I will show you my basic, my most basic technique that anyone could do without anything special or any kind of special knowledge. It's just a really, really simple uh, waterfall type effect. So after you're done building this out, you can see um, we're just gonna protect this. We're gonna shell it. We're gonna turtle it a little bit so things don't overflow. And then what we're gonna wanna do is just test it. So anytime you're doing these things, don't like wait until you got your smelter set up or your autos or your seeds are working or anything like that. Just go grab some onions from your existing farm if you have one, or just borrow some from someone, you know, ask, for, ask them for some or just whatever it takes, just get just get something. You, you can even use coal, you can use um, iron, you could use whatever that's kind of round. And you just drop them into the thing to see how it flows and see if it catches it and see if stuff pops out. So just, you know, hit Q on it and roll it into your chest and you can see here it is actually working pretty well. Um, this is this is how I typically do mine. And you can do as many levels as you want. So once this first layer, you know, uh, fills up, it's just gonna start um, automatically flowing down and then it's just gonna continue to fill up and fill up and fill up until you're at the very bottom. And so this is great if you, I guess you're on the server and you don't really want to miss anything from your farms, but other times, you know, it's just do your, you know, do a single chest if you can. But if this is what you want to do, you can do this type of format. 
I also have another uh, way of doing a bunch of them like this and they're all on the same level. So if you have level constraints, but I'm not really gonna go into that in this video, but I've, I've actually done this and I've had double sided. So I had like 10 different industrial chests um, dropping onions because I, I, I was building a lot and I didn't really have time to AFK farm them. And that was early, early on. I've actually since just consolidated everything into one um, chest. I don't bother with this anymore, but you can do it this way. And I can show you a video on how to do that sometime if you need it. Now I'm gonna show you some tips on how to utilize a vending machine in different ways than you probably ever thought you could. So first way I wanna show you is you can actually split your items. So if you have a stack of 40 items and you only wanna grab one, what you can do is you can pull out that stack, that whatever that, that stack is. So it's a great way, so say you have like a bunch of propellers here and you're like, well, I don't need, because if, if you were to bring that with you to a trade and you go and utilize a chest and you try to deposit that into a chest, for example, you're gonna give them the entire stack of propellers instead of one, because there's no way to split it. So I utilize vending machines to do this. So if I have a stack, I just go and deposit um, how many ever I wanna do. Another way of utilizing the vending machine is you can uh, use it for money transactions. So if I want to transfer money to someone, um, a lot of it, I could just auto click onto um, uh, deposit and then give them build permissions um, or they can give me build permissions and I can drop a vending machine in their base or their island and deposit money into it. Whatever that, you know, however that works um, is fine as long as you trust them. And then, you know, and, and this is typically just as a, as a forewarning here, you don't want to give someone permissions, build permissions to your island if you can help it. Um, unless you're you're doing really big money transactions where the vending machine's value is way less than what you're doing. So maybe you're buying like 10 propellers for 10 million. They don't care about your vending machine at that point. So it's got to be worth it for them to scam you. Um, now you just got to be very careful that, you know, you're not letting them, you're not giving them items while money's inside the vending machine because then they'll just withdraw it and then they'll take off. So there's a lot of things you got to, you got to just be mindful of what everything, everything you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Um, you know, get advice from someone. You can always ask me on the Discord for tips anytime or even even in the comments I can help you out. Another way of doing this, if you're gonna do money transactions like that, so say someone's gonna buy a bunch of seeds from you, what you can do is you can put a grass block inside your vending machine and then charge, you know, so if they're buying a thousand seeds at uh, 5,000 each, then you can put in the price of 5 million on one grass block. And then what you can do is after they purchase that, you can basically withdraw the money. So they just buy the one grass block for 5 million. You take the money out of the machine so they're not gonna go and steal your you know your money and then you're going to give them build permission ideally away from the machine so they don't steal it um, but you'll give them build permission and, and then drop the thousand seeds into the chest because there's no way you're going to sit there and do a thousand seeds in a vending machine i've i've done it for like two thousand and let me tell you it takes forever because then they got to refill every, every 40 they got to refill it over and over so you're just sitting there waiting waiting you're clicking in clicking it you're getting impatient so you still kind of have to use chests unfortunately because of the quantity limitations on the vending machines but that's okay you know you can you can utilize the vending machine for many things like i said so this tip comes from my friend Artinus who helped me out because we were building our berry bush. If you remember the 25,000 berry bush island we did, we actually did a lot of blocks and you know, it was just a huge, huge area. So he showed me this tip. You know, if you were to go, for example, the way I was doing it was at this kind of weird angle. It's like, you know, you'll, you'll end up going really fast and then you get this little stray one that's like a two layer and you're like, great. Now I got to break that up and clean it up. So the one way is just kind of angle your camera this way and just click on the brown area and you're not gonna double stack anything. Um, as long as it doesn't get too close. Sometimes I do it when, this, when when I get too close to the camera, it might actually double stack still. But um, it's also a great way for you to break things up. Another great tip relating to breaking things is you can actually do an auto breaker. I've, I used to do this on accident um, when I would be in like, I would be farming and then I would hit my inventory to do something real quick and I expected the pickaxe to stop and it wouldn't stop. It just kept going. Kind of discovered this by accident. And the way you do it is you go into first person view and then you start breaking parts up and then you hit E to open up your menu and it'll keep picking away until it, it doesn't find a target. So if you break everything up that's in front of you and there's no more things to break, it will automatically stop and so this is really good for things like stone or like really big areas where you just you get tired of holding down and here's a tip for how to farm a ton of trees without really going anywhere now if you saw my auto tree farm video the other day this is probably redundant for you but if you haven't this is a little bit of a tidbit that you can actually use and I've been doing this for a while and I used to get made fun of by people that would come to my streams they'd be like it dark like why are your trees your trees are too close man I'm like no they're fine and they're like no you got it wrong and I'm like no they're fine because look it if I stand here, these things pop up right away as long as they're ready. You know, so what you do is you you plant all these together and then you start seeing the trees pop up. That means they're all ready to go. And you don't really have to, um, 
run around the map. So like, you know, I could plant them and separate them out like my auto tree farm over here. And, but the problem is I got to run and it just takes a lot of time, right? So if you've got the time to spend, this is the most optimal way to farm trees. And all you got to do is plant them around you again, wait a couple minutes and then harvest them all again. So it's, it's real effective um, and easy to do. Um, or you could just go and auto farm. The problem is I don't really like auto farming my trees that much unless I'm AFK and I'm not really into doing wood projects. So that's really just for everyone else. But you know, in my case, I'd just rather buy the wood. I'll just, I'll just, I'll put a posting on the trades channel and be like, Hey, someone else that's been doing this forever. Let me have your wood. And I've got, you know, millions of coins for your wood. Now I'm not buying wood everyone. I don't, I'm not buying wood right now. All right. So here's another tip. And this one's from my friend Cornflex who is on our discord server. You know, he, he gave the tip of using ladders to block walls, basically like keep your stuff in. So this is kind of cool. So like if you got an auto farm and you want to keep your onions in, you don't really want to use any of the standard blocks. You can actually, use this it's kind of neat it's more of a decorative thing than anything because it, it it doesn't really improve anything like life you know wise but it does still work the same way as like you know and it, it looks a little sleeker i think it's a little bit more like lean looking so it's not so blocky looking which is kind of cool and here's a tip from oc from my discord as well he uh he mentioned if you get a lot of people around the fish pond and i actually did notice this on public servers i'm not on one right now i did notice this so the more people that get around the pond the more fish will spawn and i think even if they're near like like the uh the ore over here so if they're mining it inside the spawn area i think it'll actually start popping up more fish as well you just have to make sure they're not like farming all your stuff you know maybe you can make an agreement like hey i'll help you if you help me i'll hang out over here and let you fish and just let me fish for a bit and that's you know a nice collaborative way to just kind of coordinate and or alternatively you can get a bunch of alts you know i'm sure a bunch of alts will work as well um, one thing that I, I think is useful for that is a lot of the times fish will get across the pond and it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to like go clear across, you know? So here's a few account saving tips. One is if you are jumping off or falling into the void, make sure you unequip your item and that will help uh, reduce the chances you're going to actually lose an item. The issue with this is that there's two, two layers here. There is a teleporter and then there's a death layer. Sometimes as you've known inside other Roblox games, it happens to any Roblox game is that if there's lag on the server or your character, it could actually fall through the teleporter collider and it could actually hit the death layer. And when you hit the death layer, you lose your item. So that's really what's going on here. Another tip, this one's from Pig, is that if you don't allow your island to completely load, there's a good chance you could actually get your island corrupted. So if you see this, and it makes a whole lot of sense the, the more you think about it, because if you're slow loading and everything's loading in from your data and only a certain number of blocks have rendered so far, if you were to leave right then and there, anything that was in your island at that time will get saved and it will overwrite your current island. So that is a bug. Unfortunately, there's nothing I don't think they can do other than prevent your data from being saved. But you know, even then, like it's just, it's it's kind of, what I would do is just let it load, you know, completely until you get kicked, but don't start server hopping because that could actually cause uh, data corruption. So make sure you just, when you load into a new server, whether it be VIP or public, load it in completely so you don't lose your data. So that's all of it. I hope some of these tips were helpful for you. If they were, definitely hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you're new. It's been a ton of fun um, creating these auto farms for you. And uh, if you haven't noticed, they actually just recently, just actually just like hours ago, they added sand to the game and they added a couple of different things to the fishing as well. But the big thing here is they added a sand block. So you can actually buy the sand block from the block merchant. And I think it's like eight coins. So go get that sand if you want to do some sand in your projects. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you next time. Peace.